My name is Rachel Kadel Munro, and I was head of mission for Doctors Without Borders during the time of the Rwandan genocide, first in Goma in Democratic Republic of Congo and then afterwards in Rwanda. changed me completely. I think it was the, um, my innocence died in 1994. In terms of, um, you know, I'd always heard about the Holocaust. We all heard about it growing up. But I never really understood what a genocide was until I had been in this region in 1994. During the time of the Rwandan genocide, I was actually not in Rwanda. I was in Goma, which is the town the twin town of Gisenyi, which is on the other side of the border. So it's like the closest point to Rwanda, the closest, the closest border point. And there was one group of three little boys who came across and they told me what happened in their village and how they'd watched their, their mother being raped and then slaughtered, their sisters being killed, and then their father being taken away and they'd been hiding in a bush and they, and they just ran and ran for days until they got across the border. And they had uh, one of the little boys, his arm was basically hardly on his body anymore and cut it big cuts across his head. And the baby died. The little brother died in his arms. But the other side of it as well is that you see something of the human spirit come through. Um, and it's that little bit of human spirit, that little bit of humanity and dignity that remains with people, despite all those things that happens that you can latch onto and that you, you know if you see the children playing together and playing very innocent games. We were in one of the camps and it was one of the children's birthdays and I caught a group of them, maybe 10 group years, and they were giggling and laughing and talking and just gossiping like any regular child and it was just so human despite the conditions that they were living in and when you see that then you feel like hope you feel that they can move forward and that you can you can get out of this and make it a better place msf being in kigali during the genocide was must have felt like a huge support for the population, for the people who were suffering, that there was a place to go, that there were some foreigners who still remained when a lot of people had fled and left and were not coming back, when they pulled out the UN peacekeepers, when they pulled out everyone else, there was still this bunch of crazy doctors in this hospital in Kigali who were there if you were injured and if you could get there. So I think from a moral perspective, it's, it's huge that we were there. And also being there meant that as soon as the conflict was over, we were able to come in and set up extremely fast, whether it was coming in from Tanzania, coming in from Uganda, coming in from Goma, we were able to, to restart that health system very quickly. That's why this 20th anniversary is so important, because I think what people will see is a country that's rebuilt itself and has come through a terrible struggle um, whose people have witnessed things that no human being should ever witness. So it's a country that's really come through, it's got its issues, but it's really come through that. What people are not looking at and not recognizing is that neighbor country, this huge country of the Democratic Republic of Congo, where that kind of investment and that kind of focus has not been given. So those people living in North Kivu, which is that border area that received all those refugees from Rwanda, they're living as if they were still in that crisis. So I went into a hut of a woman. She was uh, 25 years old, she had five children. She, her husband had left her. He'd moved in with another woman in another one of the displaced camps. So she's on her own, so extremely vulnerable. And she's living in that tiny space with five children. The youngest is about three or four months old and the eldest around about five or six years old. They sleep on the bare earth and actually it's not even earth. Earth would be nice. It's just rock, volcanic rock, and it's lumpy and bumpy. They have no blanket to put under them, no plastic sheeting to put under them. They're just sleeping on the bare earth with their five children. I think it's really important to reflect on what happened in Rwanda. There was a genocide that took place in that country, and we promised after the, the Second World War that that would never happen again, and it did. But at the same time, we have to talk about the terrible situation of DRC and what's happening to people there. Every day there are armed actors coming in and pillaging villages and people being displaced. 
Every day children are dying from simple uh, lung infections, from pneumonia that can be prevented. Every day mothers are dying in childbirth and every day women are victims to sexual abuse. And these people deserve our help. And that's why MSF, uh, Doctors Without Borders, we have really important operations. Some of our most important and biggest operations are in this part of the world because it's so forgotten. There are people who are suffering and other people reach out their hand to try to help them. And that's, that's, if you like, that's our calling. And as individuals, we feel that, I feel that as an individual. That's why I do what I do. And that's why I believe, and I've been working now with MSF for over 20 years, because I believe that that's something that we can do as an organization and that we can really make a difference to people.